guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here i'm carolyn and today i'm going to be talking you through all of the potential roles on the disney college program so last week i took a deep dive into all about you know resort bell service dispatch i mean kind of on the disney college program but also just more as a role in general so today i thought i would break down just a little bit because i can't really speak into detail about all the different roles but i thought I would kind of talk you through what are the potential roles you could get placed in on the Disney College program. So apologies if you catch me like looking down, I have the list of every single potential Disney College program role right here. So yeah, we're just gonna go down the list and I'm going to tell you a little bit about each role. So the first potential role actually, Disney divides their roles into a couple different segments. So there's a chunk of roles they consider operations a chunk of roles they consider entertainment, a chunk of roles they consider lodging, a chunk of roles they consider food and beverage, a chunk of roles they consider retail and sales, and a chunk of roles they consider recreation. So we're gonna go section by section and then row, row, blah, 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 roll by roll. So the first section is operations and that has attractions, convention guide, custodial, monorail, photo pass photographer, skyliner, gondola, and watercraft. So that has a decent I think that, yeah, operations has the most roles in it of any section. So starting off with attractions, I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to be working a ride in the parks. That doesn't include water parks. That doesn't include that. That just includes theme parks. So like Peter Pan's Flight, Expedition Everest, It's a Small World, Spaceship, or any ride. I worked attractions in Hershey Park, so I can speak a little bit to it. You know, you rotate through, you push the buttons to make the ride go, you measure kids to make sure they're tall enough. I feel like attractions is pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's definitely one of the more popular options. Disney does put a decent amount of kids in the attractions role. You do have to get drug tested for attractions. There are certain roles that Disney deems safety critical where you have to get drug tested before you go down. So you kind of have a good idea what you get if you get an email from Disney before your role has come out saying, hey, you need to do this drug test. One thing Oh, excuse me. One thing I did learn on the Disney College program is that park greeters are considered attractions. So you can get attractions and not be placed at a ride, but you could be placed at the turnstiles in front of all the parks and, you know, scan people in with the magic bands. So that is part of attractions. I really don't know what other role it would be part of, but to me it doesn't really fit in attractions. But yeah, attractions, y'all already know what's going on there. Okay, the next one on the list is convention guide. This isn't like a super common one and it's not just working like a festival booth that's food and beverage but a convention guide according to the Disney College program website escorts large groups of guests through a park from one venue to another. Does food handling, secures roped off areas. Um, they kind of sound like a tour guide a little bit. Like I said, this isn't super common and they actually haven't placed kids in this role for a couple years now, but it is a possibility. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out what the heck a convention guide is and how it is not a VIP tour guide, but how it's not working at a festival booth. I don't know, maybe it's like private parties. People spend lots of money for Disney private parties. All right, well, we're starting off strong by not knowing what convention guide is. The next thing is custodial. And I know right off the bat, a lot of people are gonna be disappointed if they get custodial. I wouldn't be. Everyone that I've talked to who's been placed in custodial has pretty much loved the role. Like, yes, it is cleaning, it is sweeping. You gotta clean up the vomit when kids vomit. You gotta clean in the bathroom, you gotta take out the trash. But it's a very independent role. You kind of get to do your own thing throughout the day and you have a lot of great like one-on-one -on -one guest interactions that aren't necessarily limited by being behind a desk or by certain ride or food safety operations. So it's kind of, I mean, yes, you're cleaning and it's gross and I will always be confused why Disney puts their custodial cast members in the white the white suits. 
I don't know, but custodial is not the end of the world. Just about everyone that I've talked to actually likes it because it is such an independent role and you get to do your own thing and you get to have those really nice unstructured guests interactions. So custodial, self-explanatory, but also not necessarily the end of the world if you get it. All right, the next thing in operations is monorail. And while that sounds really cool, you're not allowed to drive the monorail. Not allowed to on the Disney College program, <laughs> which is sad, but you're the cast member that stands there on the different monorail platforms at the Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Contemporary, Polynesian, and the Grand Floridian. And you're the ones that, you know, make sure the gate stays closed. And yeah, you're on the platform. You're not driving the monorail, which is sad, but like you could spin it on your resume. I don't know. Kids did get monorail. Like that is a role I saw. It's not, I don't give it to a ton of people but it is something you can get on the college program. And because it's such a unique role, when you tell people you work at Disney, you're like, oh yeah, I work at the monorail. They go like, oh because they think you drive it. They don't need to know that you don't drive it. All right, continuing down the list, the next thing under operations is photo pass photographer. Once again, I feel like this one is pretty self-explanatory. You are one of the many photographers all across the Disney World Resort, not necessarily a park, not necessarily a resort, not necessarily a water park, but you're one of those guys in the white shirt and the blue short with the camera taking pictures. So that can be, you know, taking pictures on Main Street. That can be, you know, taking pictures with Mickey Mouse. Anywhere that Disney has the professional camera taking pictures. That's you, that's you. In every single park, they also have, I don't know what else to call it other than a photo pass location, which is stupid that I'm using the word to describe it, but that's where you can buy like digital hard copies of your pictures. So like you can buy the photo pass card on the My Disney Experience app and you know, get all the digital downloads. But if you want a physical hard copy of just like an image, you can go to any one of the photo pass locations um, in the parks or Disney Springs and a lovely PhotoPass cast member will print it out for you. You do rotate, not necessarily parks, but you're not standing in the middle of Main Street taking pictures for eight hours. Like you're gonna rotate your location. So you will get some AC time, but yeah. Once again, I feel like PhotoPass is a pretty self-explanatory role. If you get it, you pretty much know what you're gonna be doing. You're gonna be taking pictures. All right, next thing in operations is Skyliner Gondola. This one is very similar to the monorail. You're you're not driving the Skyliner. I mean, you can't drive the Skyliner, but you're the person standing there on the platform, making sure everyone loads the gondolas safely. That's a more recent role. I did see a couple kids get it, not a ton, but it is something that obviously, it is something that Disney, and it's obviously a role that Disney does give out, but it's not as frequent as other roles. Much like monorail, it's pretty cool and it's pretty unique. Like you get to brag all about your super cool work location. So yeah, you just load the gondolas safely. The next role under operations is watercraft. And unlike Skyliner and unlike monorail, depending on what location you get put, you actually do get to drive the boats. So the watercraft is the friendship boats that go in between Hollywood Studios and Epcot and those hotels. It's the water taxis that go in between the Magic Kingdom resorts and the Magic Kingdom. It's the ferry to and from the Magic Kingdom. It's the fire works dinner cruises that people can book where they spend lots and lots of money to go out on a boat on the Seven Seas Lagoon while the, I guess at this point in time, the enchantment fireworks are going off, but it, it's any Disney fireworks. So you get to drive the boat unless it's like the ferry boats. I don't know. There's something about like the, the size of the boat. As a college program kid, you don't get to drive the ferry boats. You do get to drive the smaller boats, the water taxis, the fireworks, dinner cruises, all of that you get to drive that, just not the big ferries. So if you're placed at the transportation and ticket center, like as your location, that means you're gonna be working the ferry and you're gonna be doing the same thing that Monorail and Skyliner is doing. They're making sure, they're standing on the dock, making sure people safely load the boat, closing the gate, doing that as necessary. I will add that watercraft does not include the Liberty Bell riverboat. That is, that is an attraction. That is not watercraft. It's purely the transportation and I guess the dinner cruises. They're not really transportation, but they are pretty darn popular. I got a lot of questions about 
booking a fireworks dinner cruise, which you have to do with the recreation cast members. So with that being said, that concludes operations. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven roles that Disney considers operations that you can be placed in on the Disney College program. All right, the next section is entertainment. This is going to be a very brief segment because there's only three potential roles. So starting off with character attendant. To put it bluntly, you're Mickey Mouse's bodyguard. You're the person that stands there with whatever character, does not matter, costume, like head, princess, does not matter. And you kind of help facilitate that interaction. You know, if things go south, you know, you got to pull that creepy dad away from Jasmine. You, you know, you help Mickey Mouse because he can't, you know, connect with these kids verbally. You help facilitate that story time. You know, you, you just help further the interaction and make sure that everything is going smoothly. So when Mickey needs to go see, you know, needs to go have a quick little chat with Minnie Mouse, you know, you gotta, you gotta close his line and say, hey, it'll be all right. You know, Mickey Mouse is just gonna go say hi to Minnie. He'll be back in the next 15 minutes. You know, Alice in Wonderland has got to go take a little tea break with the Mad Hatter. You gotta close, you know, like I said, in lack of a better term, you're kind of the character's bodyguard. You help move things forward and keep a safe, safe environment for the character because they do not move easily and they got very limited vision so it's it's your responsibility to make sure everything goes all right for the character which leads me into the next entertainment role which is character performer now this one comes with a little caveat it is something that you can do on the disney college program if you get very 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 lucky it is never a role that disney will give out you automatically it will never say on my itinerary disney character performer it'll say bell service dispatch i then attend a Disney character performer audition, they like me, then my role gets changed. So it's not one you'll get automatically placed in, you do have to attend an audition, but it is something you can do. And this includes both the costume's head characters as well as face characters. Now all face characters do start off as costume heads so you can learn how an interaction goes without actually having to verbally communicate with anyone. But you can be, you have the potential to be, you know, any character on property assuming a successful character audition that is that is like the main caveat that is the only role where like an extra step is required to get it you you can be placed in any of these roles except for entertainment you have to actively seek it out and have a successful Disney character audition the last thing under entertainment is costuming operations now compared to the last two this one's probably the least I don't know glamorous on the list that Disney considers entertainment, it's not characters. You're not helping Cinderella put on her glass slippers. You're not helping, you know, Minnie Mouse put on her bow. It's you are working in one of these several um, regular, regular, regular cast member costuming locations. So you could be working in Magic Kingdom costuming, Animal Kingdom costuming, Epcot costuming, Hollywood Studios costuming, and giving, you know, giving the Haunted Mansion maids their little bat bow hat thingy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You're giving the Tower of Tower bellhop their their snazzy little jacket but yeah it's not entertainment costuming it's every other cast member has to check out their costume that's you it's not a super common one in that they only kind of give it to kids that have like interest in fashion design or costume design or, or something along those lines if that makes sense you kind of already have to be working with clothes and I don't mean retail but like you kind of have to be like in that area to be set into costuming operations according to the website you issue costumes to fellow cast members operate a computerized checkout system um, it does look like you have to operate basic laundry equipment so I think you have to maybe launder yeah it says handling and laundering soiled garments so just washing cast costumes that cast members turn in be kind of hoard costumes because once you find your size if you turn it in to be laundered you're never gonna find that size again so at least on the college program i hoarded my costumes and so did all my roommates because just only has x amount of costumes and i am not wearing an xl when i could fit in a smaller medium depending on what location i was at oh yeah that's the other thing disney costumes i wore an extra small 
small blouse at Cinderella's Royal Table for context. That was an extra small blouse. At the Grand Floridian, I wore a small or a medium because when I checked out my costumes, they had two mediums and a small. Disney costumes don't fit the same way from location to location. I don't know, trial and error, you'll figure it out. It's it's really not fun actually going to costumings. Kind of fun because you walk in and you're like, They don't keep any of the character costumes in the costuming locations, but you still walk in and it's like, oh my gosh, there's parts of the Caribbean and there's Haunted Mansion and there's Frontierland. It's just, it's a very cool experience and uh, yeah. All right, but that concludes the entertainment costuming chunk. There are, technically Photo Pass is considered an entertainment role, so I don't know why Disney has it listed under operations. However, those are the three, uh, the three roles that Disney has listed as entertainment. All right, the next section is lodging. And first on the list is bell service dispatch slash greeter. I am going to add one thing here that I didn't add in last week's video. I'll go ahead and link that in the description down below and it should pop up in the card right about now. But you're only a dispatcher. You're not a greeter. That's an entirely different thing. Yeah dispatchers, you know, like do the computer stuff, drive the bags around. Greeters are, you know, at the Grand Floridian, it's the guy in the white suit and the spats, um, just saying hi, you know, as you're coming into the resort. They have a couple different ones. I know Caribbean Beach has a set of greeters. Like they wear different, usually highly themed costumes. So you're only gonna be a bell service. Don't let bell service slash, don't let bell service dispatch slash greeter fool you. You're just going to be a dispatcher. Don't have to worry about the greeting. You're just a dispatcher. All right, next is club level lounge. So every single Disney resort, especially, actually, I don't know that it's every single resort, at least all the deluxe resorts have a club level lounge where people pay extra. I, I would say lots and lots of money, but people pay lots and lots of money to stay at the, at, at, at the deluxe resorts. They pay extra money to stay in rooms that grant them access to a club level lounge. These come with their own private concierge and they come with free snacks like at the Grand Floridian they would have breakfast service um lunch service snack service and then drink service and they would change throughout the day all complimentary if you're staying at the club level lounge what you're doing is you're setting up you're not the concierge but you're setting up the food the drinks you're rotating you're walking around to all the people sitting in the lounge asking if they need anything so it's a little bit food service you're not actually like preparing anything you're just kind of setting up um I had to shadow it as part of my training at the Grand Floridian and it's a pretty laid-back role <laughs> the only problem is at least at the Grand Floridian you could have a shift that started at four o'clock in the morning because you got to get that breakfast service set up before people you know start to leave for the parks in the morning so but yeah saying you work in the club level lounge sounds mighty fancy but it's not anything concierge related it's setting up the, the snack and going around and asking people if they need help. The next one on the list is resort concierge. And I feel like this one is pretty self-explanatory. You are the front desk. So yeah, you're the, you're checking them in, you're checking them out. People come up to you with all kinds of questions, which you may or may not actually be able to do. You can help fix the magic bands. You can encode this, 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 and this. You can add some extra magical moments to their stay. Like you can encode celebrations on their account. So if someone's celebrating a birthday, you can encode their account. Um, so all across Disney property, they know it is your birthday. Um, yeah, front desk, pretty self-explanatory. I am gonna throw this little caveat in here just in case anyone is watching this long. I mean, yes, they can make dining reservations, front desk concierge can make dining reservations for you. However, they don't see any additional availability. What you can see on your, um, what you can see on your My Disney Experience app, what you can see on the Disney World website as available reservation times, that is all the concierge can see. They don't, they can't see any extra reservations. The most they could do is potentially call the restaurant you're looking to make reservations at and see if they could squeeze you in. But that is, I don't know that I ever really saw a yes happen. It, it's kind of few and far between. Um, Disney's pretty good about those reservations. And if you can't get one, join the walk-up wait list. But just wanted to throw that in there that unfortunately the concierge cannot see any additional reservation times. All right, the last thing under the lodging category is 
Jenny's house person. This might be the only, this might be the only role that it's exactly what it says it is. You're going around, you'll be assigned a hotel, and you'll be assigned rooms to clean. Unlike custodial, I mean, it is still a very independent role, but I definitely did not hear as many people be as positive about house person as I did about custodial, just because the labor is actually a lot more intense. Like you gotta be lifting that mattress in the air to change it. Like Disney does not mess around when it comes to their cleanliness standards, especially in your hotel room. So I think it's fairly self-explanatory. You're gonna be doing, you know, when people hit the parks, you're gonna be taking out their trash. When they check out, you're gonna be flipping that room and you have to flip it by X time because all well, the fam, you know, the person who's staying in that room next arrived three hours hours early and they want to know why the heck their room isn't ready yet and house person fairly self-explanatory um with that being said they have really great hours because check-in and check-outs happen at a certain time um at least at the grand floridian check out technically was at 11. um you could get a late check out as late as one and check-in technically didn't start until three o'clock like you have really great hours so that's that's a benefit of house person you know there's no overnight stuff because people are sleeping so yes a lot of labor but you probably have one of the most consistent consistent set of hours out of any single role on the Disney College program. All right, next we're gonna jump into food and beverage. Now this is a really tiny section. It only has two potential options. You can be a seater or you can work in quick service food and beverage. So I can speak a little to being a seater because I did somehow score a side gig of like working at Cinderella's Royal Table once a week. I picked up a random shift once. They asked me if I liked it and I was like, yeah. And they were like, do you wanna come back? And I was like, sure. And they said, cool um give me your number and I'll text you so I just got texted like hey can you come in today and I'd come in for like four hours so that was really fun but cedars do not touch food you do not touch food you check people in for their dining reservation um, assuming they have made the reservation you can add people to the walk-up wait list and then you show people to their tables that's kind of like the main thing that everyone thinks of is you check them in for their reservation and you walk them to their tables at least at the castle there are a couple extra bonus positions you can do and I will once again link my get ready to work with me at Cinderella's Royal Table video down below because I go into it a little bit better but you can assign families that have checked in a table based on what you see is available. Um, you can set the tables like with silverware. Servers clear their own tables. They bust their own tables at least at the castle but the seaters will then set the table with the silverware and the napkins and the yada 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 yada. You can stock the silverware and the plates in the back like as they come out of the dishwasher. You make these nice little trays that have X amount of things on them. So who's ever um, setting the tables can just grab a tray and go and then grab another tray and go. So you can do that and you can stock. I don't even know what it was, but like stock. There was one shift where I just folded napkins for four hours. It was chef's kiss. Oh, and for certain restaurants that do have character interactions, like at the castle, there was a position called lobby creator where you were, Cinderella had an attendant, but you were like attendant 2.0, where you stood in such a way that you could see families coming in and you could see Cinderella, but Cinderella could only see you and the families could only see you. So you'd, oh, welcome your majesties right this way. And Cinderella would know there was someone in the castle. You also would hand out um, magic wands and swords and I loved giving magic wands to little princesses. But yeah, that is pretty much the cedar roll. All right, so the next thing is quick service food and beverage. This is probably like the least glamorous roll out of like all the Disney. I don't know, out of, in my opinion, that's probably like the least attractive thing. Basically you just work in a Disney quick service restaurant, not a table service or sit down restaurant. And you can be the person punching in the order or you're not working in the kitchen, but you do have to follow food safety guidelines. You're the person who like the kitchen hands you that plate of chicken fingers and you turn around and you hand it to the guest. Um, there are a couple special locations and you'll see on your itinerary, if you get one, it'll say specialty beverage. Specialty beverage is code for Starbucks. I really 
really thought I was gonna get sent to Starbucks because I heard a rumor that Disney only, like will only put you in Starbucks if you have previous Starbucks experience because you have to not only know Disney food service guidelines, but you have to know all these Starbucks recipes. And at the specialty beverage, you're the one making the, oh my God, the vanilla sweet cream cold brew. You're the one making the pink drink. You're the one making the double chocolatey chip frappuccino. Like, I don't know how true that rumor was. Um, I didn't get sent to Starbucks, even though I have worked at Starbucks, so. But if you see like quick service food and beverage, specialty beverage, that's code for Starbucks. If you see quick service food and beverage, that could be, you know, Pinocchio's Village House, Docking Bay 7. That could be, you know, like anything in Epcot. That could be one of the festival booths in Epcot. That could also be, sadly, one of the little snack carts. So you could be passing out the Mickey bars and the bottles of lemonade and that could be you. Quick service food and beverage is anything that has to do with food that's not a sit down restaurant. So yeah, it's a lot of things, but you're never actually making anything unless you are at Specialty Beverage, AKA Starbucks. And that is the entirety of the food and beverage category. You can't be a server, you can't be a bartender on the college program. Afterwards, like go for it. But on the college program, those aren't roles that are available to you. Also, I would like to go ahead and add at this point because I didn't do it in my bell services video and it kind of fits here. You can't get to on the college program. There are certain roles that can get tipped. Bartender, server, bell person. Not bell service dispatcher, but just bell person. None of those roles are available to you on the college program. Um, Disney has a very strict tipping policy. Like you can get fired if you accept monetary tips. So say no to tips. All right, the next category is retail slash sales. We're getting down to the end here. So the first one listed is the Bibbidi Boppity Boutique. I I really wanted to do this role, um, but it wasn't an option on my program because literally the boutique opened like two months after I left. Like it just wasn't open for it to be a role. But at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, you are Fairy Godmother's Apprentices. They changed the name. It used to be Fairy Godmother in training and now it's a Fairy Godmother's Apprentice. And you are doing those magical princess transformations on all the little princesses that come into the castle. I have heard it has one of the most rigorous and intense training periods of any role like you have to learn how to replicate exactly all of these hairstyles and makeup styles and then in addition you also have to sell these packages so you could basically either be placed on a given day doing makeup and nails and hair on small children or helping their parents you know okay they have this reservation at the boutique because you have to have a reservation it is very popular you could be helping their parents say okay we have this reservation um okay do you want the package with the dress? Do you want just the package with the hair and nail? Like what's going on here? But it is a very popular, like people really want that role. It's not, the people that I have seen get it on the Disney college program have done multiple programs before. I don't know if it's what the logic is. Even if you have a Florida cosmetology license, like if you have a valid cosmetology license, you're still, you have to take your own test for Disney. So Bippity, they do not mess around with the Bippity Boppity Boutique and you yeah, it would be so cool to say, you know, like, oh, I'm a fairy godmother. But the odds of getting placed there, if you have not done a program previously, are very slim. And the odds, even if you have done a program previously, are still very slim. But they have three locations. They have one in the castle. At the time that I'm filming this video, that is the only one that is currently open. The Disney Springs location and the most recent location, the Grand Floridian, have not reopened since the pandemic. I think it's just because they have to seriously train the, I mean, Disney does not mess around when it comes to training, but they seriously train these fairy godmothers. And at the moment, they only have enough for the castle location, which is the best location. Like, come on, if you're gonna be a fairy godmother, do it in the castle. But three locations, three potential locations. So just because you're a fairy godmother in train, just because you're a fairy godmother's apprentice does not mean that you will get placed in the castle. You could be put at the Grand Floridian or at Disney Springs. The next retail slash sales role is merchandise. I feel like this one, once again, is fairly self-explanatory. You're gonna be working in one of Disney's countless gift shops, or you could be working at one of the push carts. I had two roommates that were merchandise. Morgan, as you know, worked in the traditional storefront. She worked at the Emporium and Leah, she worked um, Hollywood Studios 
push carts. Yep, you're gonna be selling merchandise. I feel like this rule is pretty self-explanatory. I'll be intrigued to see what happens when uh, Phantasmic reopens. I would not mind working Hollywood Studios glow carts because they have them all set up there at the front of the amphitheater, selling the magic bubble wands before Phantasmic. Like, you get to watch? I feel like that'd be the one circumstance where I'd like not mind a push card. But point is you're gonna be selling Disney merchandise anywhere and everywhere. The super nice thing about quick service suit and beverage and merchandise is you can pick up at pretty much any location, hotel, resort, like if there is an available merchandise spot, if there's an available food and beverage shift, you can take it, you can jump in and grab it. You don't have to be trained at that location. And that goes for a lot of roles on this list. However, none have, I don't wanna say flexibility, but quick service food and beverage and merchandise just have so many more options than other roles have for picking up at other locations. Like as a bill service dispatcher, I can only only pick up bell service dispatch shifts at the resorts. But let's say I got merchandise, and for the sake of this argument, at N Mouse Mercantile at the Grand Floridian. Okay, there's a Fantasyland shift available, I can pick it up. Okay, there's a Tatooine Trader shift available, I can pick it up. There's just, you, you can go a lot of places. Yeah, you can, you can go places. All right, jumping down to the next one, vacation planner. This is one that is another one kind of like the boutique and that I haven't really seen anyone gotten placed in it unless this is like a second or third program. It's not one that first time DCP people generally get placed in. And if I'm being perfectly honest, I have not seen people getting placed in this role since the pandemic, but you'd be one of the people at all four parks and at Disney Springs. They have, you know, the, the, the windows, the people in the window selling the tickets. You're not really a vacation planner. I think the title is a little misleading. You're selling tickets. You're helping people find park reservations. I feel like it's a little bit self-explanatory, but also not. Yeah, but like I said, haven't seen it really since the pandemic and really only a you've already done a program kind of role. But yeah, you're one of the people in the ticket booth before you get into the park or at the vacation planning center in Disney Springs. And that completes retail sales. All right, we're on our last category, guys. Recreation. Okay, this first one is a uber popular role that lots of people want to get. Children's activities. Okay, my eyes twitching right now. Can you see it? Um, children's activities play all the games out by the pools. My um, Y'all know Natalie, one of my roommates, was children's activities at Pop Century and Art of Animation, and they play all the poolside games, the campfires that are put on um, at every single Disney resort. Those are put on by children's activities. You know, the little marshmallow kits you can buy to go with the campfires. Those are children's activities. The movies under the stars are children's activities. So basically all of the fun little gamey things around the resorts are children's activities. I don't know why people want this role so much, but they do. It is a high demand role, but they don't have a ton of spaces because it's only at the resorts. Um, they give it to a lot of like education majors. With that being said, just because you're an education major doesn't mean you're gonna get it. But yeah, Children's Activities does all the little games all around the resort. All right, the next thing is, I don't think could be more self-explanatory. <laughs> self lifeguard. You can be a lifeguard for Disney. Now this is a role that at least when I was applying for the Disney College program, you would not get automatically placed there. After you were accepted into the college program, Disney sent you a little email asking if you would be comfortable being a lifeguard. If you answer yes, you were pretty much getting lifeguard. If you answered no, you would get any one of the other roles. It wasn't a question on the application that would like, oh no, I didn't check. Yes, I, I could be a lifeguard. I'm gonna get rejected. No, you were already accepted. But lifeguard has two potential things. You could be working at a water park. You could be working at a resort pool. What I heard while working at a water park would be fun. Resort pool is where it's at because you've got to make a lot of saves, specifically at the Typhoon Lagoon Wave Pool if you get water park. Resort pool is pretty much just like, you know, work in your neighborhood pool. But you, you get multiple pools. Like, I don't know how to, I saw people posting that they, you know, it's not like you just got the Grand Floridian pool, but you got like the monorail loop resort pool. So it's not like you're sitting at the same pool every day, but lifeguard, pretty self-explanatory other than man, you got to take, I mean, you have to pass your lifeguard certification. Disney does not mess around when it comes to safety. The next thing is recreation recreation attractions. Now remember 
way back at the beginning of the video when I said that you don't, if, if you get attractions, that is not water slides. That's recreation attractions. That's water slides. You're the person that stands there at the top of the slide and says, wait, and then when the lights turn green, you push them down the slide. I did a little bit of that in Hershey Park. Water feels nice on your toes, but that is recreation attractions. You're gonna be working at the water park or at the mini golf course. Did you know that Disney, Disney has two miniature golf courses, Winter Summerland Miniature Golf and Fantasia Fairways and Gardens. And you could be working um, there selling, you know, the mini golf stuff, or you could be working at the water park. So if you see recreation attractions, you're not gonna be in a park, but you could be in a water park or at the mini golf courses, which I think is so random, but like, how many people know that Disney has miniature golf courses? How many people know that Disney has four golf courses? Not miniature golf, golf courses. I don't know, who wants to go to Disney World and just golf? Actually, I say that it was a lot of old guys from the Grand Floridian, but I don't know. That's recreation attractions. And the last thing I'm very confused why it's on this list is spa. I, I gotta read the role description for this one. Accurately book, change, and cancel spa, salon, or fitness center appointments. Um, meet the guests when called by the front desk. Assist with purchases. Okay, you're not actually giving the massages. You're just kind of like the front desk person at the spa. Okay, well, this is one I really don't see people getting, as you can tell by the fact that I literally had to read the role description, but it also could be because the spa, like the spas weren't really open while I was there because of the pandemic. Um, the one at the Grand Floridian reopened about halfway, maybe not halfway, a month or two into my program, and that was the only spa that was open on Disney property. So basically you can work spa front desk. We've learned something together today. And that is it. We have gone through every single role on the Disney College program website. I do want to add a little caveat here because I thought something was coming later down the line, but it didn't. You can get parking. I don't know if that's part of attraction. I don't know what that's part of, but you can get parking. So you can work any of, not the resort parking lots, but the parks parking lots. I didn't, I don't love that. But um, you could be driving the tram. You could give the spiel on the tram. You could be the person standing in the booth, making sure you're, you know, you're, you're paying, you know, for parking appropriately. Or you could be this guy, you know, the stop. The parking is a role that you can get. And I wonder if it's part of attractions. I don't know, but that is something you can do on the Disney College program. So that is that. We have made it through Disney's official list of every single role you can get on the Disney College program. I hope this gave you an idea of, you know, maybe something you would like to do, you know, a role you might have fun with on the program, or if you, you know, just got your role, maybe give you a little bit of insight into what you will be doing doing. Um, obviously this wasn't the most, you know, comprehensive of every role as I can only really speak to one kind of two roles. Yeah. I hope this helped. You know, unfortunately you can't indicate interest in college program roles anymore. Since the applications came back after the pandemic, you just have to be open. You don't get to indicate interest. You have to accept all roles with the only exception being lifeguard because that one is so safety critical. But yeah, I hope this helped. I hope you all have a blast on your Disney College program and I will be seeing you all again soon. Bye!